It's time! So I've had my case here for about two years and I just wasn't ready to build anything, but now I am. And I need to replace the old Leashy space station because I have retired it. And I also need to stop sharing a PC with my husband. So it's time for my own again. So here we go, about to build my first mini PC. So we have two brands to thank for some disclosures, which is MSI and Intel. Thank you for gifting parts for this build. The rest I did purchase myself. So enough yapping, let's get building. I'm so nervous. This is my first build without guidance. So why did I choose MSI for parts? Well, after spending the last two years with MSI at Computex, it's been really cool getting a bigger look into their products and seeing how all the products have become a part of their new easy DIY range, which I think is great for people like me who have never really built before. I'm not going to lie, I love tech. Obviously, you know that, but I am not technical when it comes to PC parts like this. So to simplify the build process, we have the MPG Z890i Edge TI Wi-Fi motherboard, that's a big name in this gorgeous white. Let's rewind a little bit. Why do I have white parts inside of a black case? Well, I fell in love with the color combo of the black and the timber on the Fractal Terra because it does fit in with the aesthetic that I want to create for my office, but I also can't give up on my love of white parts, builds, and peripherals. I've always loved a white aesthetic, so I'm kind of torn between the two. So I wanted a surprise white build on the inside just to appease myself. And this build, it'll be a space saver for me. Going from an obnoxious full tower to this, it is very therapeutic. Oh, and a forewarning, to come as a small little caveat, that meant we had to make a change to one of the parts of this build. And for novice builders like me, it became a bit of a sad hiccup. I bought three CPU coolers, let's just say that. This motherboard is made for Intel, which is my chosen chip for this build. More on that soon, but this is a mini ITX board fit with plenty of IO for the kind of setup that I need. It's Wi-Fi 7, HDMI 2.1, has plenty of M.2 slots in case I do want to up the storage and it does support Thunderbolt 4. It is plenty enough for the build that I'm after. So I am pairing this build with the Intel Core 7 to 65K processor. Why? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, my husband's PC build does have a 5090 and a Ryzen 7 9800X3D. Two, I wanted an Intel build for potential direct comparisons in the future but also because three, a new year's resolution of mine is to try and learn a new editing suite that isn't solely reliant on Mac. So having a better multi-threading performance is an ideal hope to have. And four, Intel's ability to keep cooler in smaller form factor PCs, that was a big standout for the size build that I want. So something that can handle multiple things across gaming and creating, it's ideal for me. Who knows, maybe I'll start streaming again in the future. I've got a computer. So thank you to Intel for supplying the CPU. For a bit of glitz and glam, I have gone with the G-Skill Trident Royal Neo RAM. If I was rich, there would be signs. 32 gigabyte DDR5, that is more than enough for me. Same thing here, two terabyte SSD. Right now that is fine. I have gone with the Samsung 990 Pro with a heatsink because the speeds on here, they're gonna be fine for what I'm using this computer for. And I really don't wanna pay any more for an SSD. So we've run into a slight little caveat with this build, uh, because I did buy an SSD with a heat sink, it does mean we cannot put the heat sink that the motherboard has back on, which I don't think is a problem. That's why I said a caveat, but if I do need to go buy another SSD without a heat sink, I will. And that she did. It is time for the cooler. So this is the Thermalrite APX90 X53 CPU cooler. It's a simple fan cooler. I tried to find a white one to match the aesthetic, but the best we could get was this gray. Because of how tight of a space we are working with, I've gone with a CPU cooler plus the fans of the GPU. I think that would be more than enough given the slots in the panels of the case and the fact that I can easily raise up one of those side panels too if I find it gets too hot. If it becomes problematic in time, I'll reassess, but I do think it'll be okay. I'm not worried. So now that the motherboard is 90% done, let's get it mounted into the case, install the PSU, and then I can unveil the GPU. Now the long awaited moment. What GPU did I get? With many thanks to MSI, I have an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5070 Ti 
16 gig Ventus 3X PZ in this gorgeous white. This is a new model with a zero trace power path, which has the connector running from the rear of the GPU instead of the front where it would usually wrap around. In this sort of build, you can't really see how clean and simple the build process becomes because of our tiny little motherboard. But if I had a mid to full size tower, like these posts that I made at Paxels this year, you can see just how neat and virtually cable free it all becomes. And the magnetic backplate helps make the installation quick and easy. Of course, being a 16 gigabyte 5070 Ti, I've now got a system that not only is powerful, but it can sustain itself well. It's more than enough for what I need. So here is the final PC and we've got to talk about a couple of things. The first thing is this, there is a really ugly CPU cooler on here. Unfortunately, due to the clearance size of the case and the GPU size that I'm working with, it means that there wasn't a lot of room to maneuver things around. There's actually a little heat sink on the motherboard that protrudes out and it caused our chosen CPU fan to sit lopsided. So that meant that the CPU wasn't making 100% contact with the fan, obviously resulting in major heat spikes instantly so we had to change it after trying an alternative we had the same issue and we weren't supplied with long enough screws to safely secure that fan to the motherboard again because of that little heat sink so we found this smaller one from silverstone it's small enough to not be affected by the heat sink bump but ugly enough to make me really sad about the aesthetics but the main thing is that the pc is working well and that cpu is now keeping cool the issue with going small form factor like this and keeping a pretty big size gpu in here meant that i didn't have a lot of room to move back the motherboard and fit an aio cooler which would have probably worked best also the fact that there's zero space in this case to mount the fans from that AIO. So this is a solution that we found and I'm just so happy that it's finally working. So while we were out shopping for a new CPU cooler, I did decide to swap out the SSD just for the sake of having a complete motherboard with the supplied heat sink. I still don't think it would have been a problem, but I still wanted to use the included heatsink because it looks nice when the board is complete. But I got this crucial P310, speeds are fine. Price, not so much. But overall, this new small form factor PC is a simple modern build fit for any work or gaming space. I know this case is so popular and is older now, but I do love its simplicity. The black with the wood is sleek, and now it matches my husband's PC, which is the Fractal North XL case. Yes, we are that kind of couple. <laughs> Fractal have a nice aesthetic, okay? A big thank you again to MSI and Intel for providing the motherboard, the GPU, and the CPU. And a major thank you to all of you for supporting my channel. I hope you have enjoyed this video and I do look forward to changing things up in the new year because I am about to move houses. Woo! So subscribe and stay tuned because I look forward to talking more tech with you in the next video.